Welcome back everyone! Welcome back to Let's Play UFO Extraterrestrials. We have just uh, researched, well not just, but we've researched particle technology and are now making particle rifles which should really help us with, um, well, destroying aliens. Because they're quite nasty, you know? And we have uh, completed the research of the hibernation room. Well, cryo unit, actually. The freezing unit is a complex device adjusted for all alien organic species, protecting them from post-hyper jump shock caused by extreme space-time curvature. Ugh. In essence, it is a hibernation device used to suppress living functions of the crew during long-distance interstellar travel. First, the alien is sedated. Secondly, body temperature is rapidly decreased. This slows breathing and lowers the subject's metabolic rate. The freezing unit seems to be one of the requisites for interstellar travel. Okay, looks quite interesting. Um, hibernation room, navigation room, engine injector, holy crap, there's a lot of stuff. Let's do that. Blim. Alright. Full speed ahead. An engine injector. The Centaurus engine uh, needs for its function a source of Hadron. A system for of large linear accelerators was shown as the best solution. The accelerators are directed at one point in which the accelerated particles agglomerate and produce a concentration of subatomic particles from which a group of Hadrons is filtered on the basis of matter spectrometer. Owing to the demand of, on small size and short line of accelerators and their continuous function, the accelerators are constructed for extreme output and are supplied by annihilation source which takes the matter and antimatter from the generator. The matter from the generator is also used for acceleration in, uh, of which its continuous supply is secured. Man, these sentences. The injector is a very intricate and powerful component, which is crucial for engine functions and thereby uh, also for the success of the whole mission. Hibernation room. There we go. Let's see, I still need... Well, these are the injectors. Hopefully I don't need to make two of them. Yeah, I don't, because the engines were done in one shot. Uh, I need the generator, which needs to be researched. Oh my god, so much of this stuff. Well, let's go. Espionage, ion, pulsar. Peloponnesia, well... You've made the wrong mistake here, buddy. Yep, that's what I said. Hibernation room, there we go. Although the transit through space curved by uh, gravitation motors significantly shortens interstellar travel, a strong acceleration in various directions has impact on the ship, as it is impossible to exclude with certainty the occurrence of acceleration peaks with intensities threatening life forms, hibernation in a specific hibernation cubicle filled with liquid turned out as the most suitable uh, survival way. Um, didn't you say that we only entered hyperspace? That doesn't really mean horrible acceleration or anything. Without hibernation, the acceleration effect resembles a high fall onto a concrete sidewalk. A high fall onto a con... Okay. Organs and tissues are deformed and bones may break. With immersion into liquid, inertial forces generated by acceleration is transformed and its effect on living organism is like diving into larger depth of water. Man, English. Which the organism can endure much better. Apart from that, hibernation cubicles also serve as a rescue means in case of gravitation engine failure, when it is possible to reach uh, a destination with subluminous infraluminous flight in several decades or centuries in the state of hibernation. Why was there a need to have subluminous and then infraluminous? Of course, I mean, they're the same. Uh, hard production difficulty. I mean, if anything, you would say infraluminous and then for people that didn't, you know, understand what the prefix infra meant, said subluminous. I don't know. I'm just nitpicking. Uh, navigation room, there we go. There is so much stuff to research. I do love large research uh, trees. I really do like them. There we go. Pilot's cabin. Well, this is the navigation room. Centaurus navigation is a modification of UFO spaceflight uh, navigation adapted to human needs. The primary components of the Centaurus system are a molecular computer and navigation uh, sensors, which include sensors able to detect relic radiation. This newer system comes equipped with a navigational desk, which is a large screen panel enabling dual pilot navigation. The tactical advantage of this panel in uh, include increasing maneuvering accuracy during meteor storms 
What? And through areas of dense interstellar matter. Wait, meteor storms? Well, meteor storms only occurred on a planet. I mean, while the crew is in hibernation during a hyperspace jump, Centaurus navigation initiates autopilot communication with the built-in UFO space flight navigation. So do we have a living computer there as well? The autopilot deploys a remarkably intelligent artificial navigation system capable of solving of actual flight situations. You mean all? To communicate with a flight com uh, course computer in the place of a human pilot. In the case of an emergency, the autopilot can interrupt the flight and dehibernate the crew. Centaurus navigation is a successful modification of alien technology that, thanks to its capabilities and reliability, ensures a stealthful sneak attack upon an alien-occupied Earth. Oh, so we're going back to Earth? Huh. That's interesting. Pilot's cabin. That is certainly interesting. Well, let's do this. We're still producing all those rifles. Oh no, we're now out of money. 91. The nerve center and brain of Kentaur. What? Did they name the ship Kentaur before and then decided to change it to Centaurus? I think so. You know, Centaurus. Okay, it consists of the navigation panel, the flight com uh, course computer, the outputs of close-range sensors, and also the status panels of the ship. During subluminous uh, speed flights and in-conflict situations, two pilots operate the ship from the pilot cabin. This cabin is used for piloting during the subluminous part of interstellar flights and to prepare the autopilot to traverse curved space. The main crew consists of a pilot and a co-pilot, who are together able to operate the ship. If necessary, either may also fill the role of flight mechanic, whose position is in the back of the cabin. The flight mechanic can take over control of the cockpit system, for example, during a conflict situation. <clears throat> Interesting. Right, there's nothing else now. So let's do another commander. How many Viper commanders do we have? I mean, I'm not complaining, but yeah. And now we'll have to make the Centaurus stuff. That's taken a long time. Oh yeah, because it's paused because of lack of money. Crap. I need more money. Well, we can get rid of some of these now. Um, because we've got quite a bit of particle rifles coming up. Stun grenade, stasis grenade. Stun grenade mark 2. Desert Viper. Okay. UFO cryo units. Oh, I can sell it there. Because yeah. <coughs> I've researched it there. Okay, build more! Shuttle has been completed. Ooh. The alien shuttle is a medium sized combat and transport cruiser class vessel used to carry large payloads such as industrial minerals, food, or even humans to be used as experimental guinea pigs. The shuttle operates at frequent intervals on a route between the starport and the alien mothership. The mothership is standing by in the Lagrange point between the Earth and the Moon, where the gravitational forces are exactly equal. The shuttle is equipped with a gravity control device to pick up heavy loads and secure them on board. Oops. Uh, <clears throat> there is also an, an identification device, SRO2, that enables the shuttle to reply to incoming identification requests from the mothership. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's just, I just have a feeling that's going up, so we have a limited amount of time or something, I don't know. Right, another Viper Commander, but let's do a... Imperator, Imperator, Imper uh, Imperator, whatever. I should probably do the uh, Devilfish, which is another transporter, so I can have even more people. <coughs> there we go, that was quick. The Imperator is a heavy air-to-air -air missile. During its first flight phase, it is navigated by the command system of the launching vessel. During its second flight phase, this control is taken over by a cooled IR warhead. The missile is maneuvered by aerodynamical steers in the missile's front segment. However, these steers have only an auxiliary function during flight, as the missile is propelled by a small gravitational engine of omnidirectional maneuverability. So what's the point of the you know, little wings then. As far as flight distance is concerned, it is only outflanked by the long distance missiles by a small margin. The explosive warhead is also impressive. Unlike the spherical explosion of previous rockets, the Imper uh, Imper Imp Imp 
Imperators <laughs> explosion is focused in a single direction in order to cause damage that it, uh, that it as severe as possible. Weird. The explosion's energy is thus not wasted in the external energy wave, but entirely focused as a beam, one meter in diameter and several tens of meters in length. This technology surpasses everything in our possession. The antimatter particle shower vaporizes everything in its way. In the second flight phase, the missile's computer employs a gravitational engine to fire the shot precisely at the enemy UFO, and then activate the warhead. The missile is the very best weapon we have against the aliens. So, I guess this is the last one. Uh, let's see, Thunderbolt, yeah, that's quite a lot more damage. A little more range, more reload, of course, as per usual, and nice accuracy. Um... Let's do the transport devilfish. There we go. I'll probably make the devilfish. Of course, I don't have the money. Espionage. You're not going to espionage anything. One should suffice. It's just a tiny one. There we go. Should probably get it, but... Once again, I don't have the money. Well, I do have more particle rifles, so I can uh, get rid of some of these. That's not going to be enough for long. Yeah, there we go. Abductions. Patria. Bye. I should probably get it, but... Hmm. There's the 25th espionage. Ooh, particle technology. Hmm. I might want to get this one. Where is it? If it's gonna land, though. Well, actually, does it matter if it lands? Hmm. It doesn't. I usually get the same amount of aliens and... Uh, hmm. I don't know. Well, particle technology again. Avonium mining. I'm gonna get this one. Get it. And that one, I'm gonna... Where is it going? Come on. Peloponnesia, there we go. I'm going to get it over here. Bang! Okay. And now we're going to intercept this one. It's more particle technology, of course. It doesn't seem like we can actually use it. Uh, I mean, get any from them. Uh, particle. Oh, there we go. It's only one slot, so that's nice. And it's a lot of ammo in each... It's 30 per, so that's pretty damn good. Is it any heavier? I think it's actually lighter. Let's see, weight 32, 25. Yeah, it's a lot lighter. Interesting. So, better all around. Wait. There you go. Yeah, better all around indeed. You guys are lucky. In my days, I used to use a shotgun to get the aliens. And now you can use these high-tech performance weapons. What I wouldn't give for them back then, you have no idea. Right, there we go. Very nice. Furious George <clears throat> did not die, but was close to dying. Uh, there we go. Ah, well, just one person will be without the, uh, particle rifle. Kind of nice. Your strength is abysmal. We need to do something about that dragon. There we go. Oh. Never mind. Right. I think we're all ready. Yep. Let's launch. Whoosh. Oh, poor there. Yeah, I should have been shooting down more aliens. But hey, at least that's uh, more money. So that is always very nice. More money. We need more money. Man, these lights are enormous. What do they have? Antimatter reactors in there to make, you know, light? Well, that's nice. We haven't been fighting on a uh, sandy ground for a while now. I like that. Hello? Is it going to be those horrible? Yeah, it's going to be those horrible things. And it's this guy, actually. If we have any... Um, Stun grenades, might be worth it. Well, the question is, can I throw it over, the, over there? Can't throw there. 
Oh, I, actually, it's telling me where I, I can throw it. Very nice. What the hell? Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding me. That just made that little dot? Uh, okay, just kill it then. Oh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, one shot, one kill. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like it. I still would have liked to get that thing alive, but hey, that was brilliant. We gotta be careful, these things are horrible. Well, those things are especially horrible, those uh, terror floaters. Those are... Ugh. But yeah, I really hate this. You know, it said, okay, there's an obstacle here and here, and I don't know, it's just gonna be one... Um, one slot wide. It's really annoying. Because I want more commanders. I don't know if it really matters again. I think Viper and commanders are just fine. They're telling us things. And I think these guys would be telling us the same. But hey, you know, it's, it's the thrill of catching one of these powerful things. Right, let's end the turn. I'm betting they're going to have those terror floaters with them. Ugh. Well, these things as well. Those warm things or whatever they are. Wasn't it here? Ah, ow! Jasmo got really hurt there. Okay, where the hell is that coming from? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's up in the... Okay. Kill it. <laughs> one shot, one kill. But we can't destroy the trees, so... Yeah. Right, 27, 32. Look at that, it's so inexpensive to shoot. Oh, man. Yep. Sorry, aliens, you just had one... One chance to be superior to us. And Jasmine is not bleeding. Wow. You had one mission where you were superior, but now... Well, just look at our weapons. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, of course. She needs this. 107 all to the head. Ouch. That's not enough. That ain't enough at all. Mocha only has one of these as well. Well, it should help a little bit. Right. Metal Bunny does not have anything. Bebus does. Right, Jezdemol, over there. Yeah, they still hurt, though. They still hurt. But, we can kill them in one or two shots, which is pretty amazing. There's the UFO. And it already has a hole. It has a hole! Let's see if there are any more over there here. Oh, yeah, there is. Hmm, I think we can do a single shot, but actually we can't, because it's out of sight. So that's a little problematic. Hmm. Who can shoot it? From? Certainly not George Mellons. Hmm. If I go over here. Yep. There we go. Alright, let's crouch and do a snapshot with a 93% chance to hit. Wasn't enough, but it's better than an aim chop of 50. Oh, wow. Wow. This guy actually survived all of that. It kind of sucks. The good doctor. I don't think you can... Oh, you can! 91 with a snapshot. <laughs> Look at that trick shot. What the hell is this guy surviving all of this? Bang! Am I hitting him? Or is he flying? What? Are you going to die? Holy crap, this guy took so much beating! Bloody hell! That was insane! Man! How did you see that? It was like a walking tank, well, floating tank. Dragon 7. Wait, we still see one. Oh, crap. Ah, damn it. Those guys are nasty, we need to get line of sight. Excellent. Let's crouch. Hmm. Is it gonna be enough? 
Oh crap, you have this. You have the ear rifle. That's not gonna be enough. <laughs> That's it. Well, I will see you next time when we see if anyone dies from that. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.